I'm gonna try to repair this coil and brazing on aluminum is not easy, but I have successfully brazed these before and so I'll show kind of how I do it, how I clean it, and how I braze it. You can see the factory braze there, right there, is just not, was not done right. And so that's where it's leaking. Normally it should flow inside there, so I don't know what happened there, but we have to get that area very, very clean. All right, let's go over some of the supplies you need first. I'm gonna use this map gas torch on a hose. In general, you do wanna use propane or map and not acetylene, that, that's gonna be too hot. I'm gonna clean it with this wire brush and uh, some degreaser. And this is not a water base, this is a lot like brake clean. You want something that doesn't leave any kind of residue behind. Might even get in there and clean it with this and a pick. And then I'm going to be using Harris's Alex Core. I, I think um, Lucas Milhop, ho hopefully I'm saying that right, makes one that I've used, works well. I, I think the number is 822. But I'm going to be using this Harris Flux as well. Even though this rod has flux in it, I really, really like having extra flux because if you happen to melt off the flux in the rod a little too early, uh, this is a good backup for, for that. And it's just like a powder. Um, I could mix it up with some water, but I'm just, oh, actually I did. I did mix it up with water. It normally comes as a powder, but I've made it into a paste here. All right, let's get it clean. I'll try to show bits and pieces of the cleaning process. Uh, it's just really hard to get in here, but I'm using this wheel right now and just going You know, the reason that aluminum doesn't corrode is because it corrodes very, very quickly. It forms an aluminum oxide layer and then nothing else can get to it. That's why it's very uh, resistant to like Oh, you know, most most chemicals and things like that. So we have to remove that oxide layer or the braze will never stick to it. So that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. I'm having a hard time getting behind this U-bend here. So let me get in here. Now I do know from experience that it's very, very difficult to get down inside there clean. And so a lot of times the strategy is not really to get your braze to flow in here like it does in the factory joints, but to build up a layer around. Um, ideally, I would like to get it inside, but it's just really, really hard to get that area clean enough especially when it's been leaking oil, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna go around here and do the best I can. I wanna clean up this area and this area really good because again, we're gonna try to mound some braze up on there. All right, you can see how shiny this is and I packed the whole area with uh, the flux and you'll notice this Sharpie mark right here. One of the really hard things about brazing aluminum is that it doesn't really indicate how hot it is, like steel or copper where it changes color. So at the point that the Sharpie starts to disappear, it's going to be hot enough to braze. Uh, with my brazing rod, I, I bend a 90 and I'll use that to get up under there and then obviously a straight in to fill in here. Okay, let's get to it.
spike fell over. Okay, I'm gonna let that cool and then we're gonna take a look at it. All right, let's look at the braze now and talk about it. So it did flow in there really nicely. I mean, in fact, I wish that they would fill all of these to that point. I've seen a lot of leaks in these and I, I just feel like they would be better if they had more braze in them. Anyways, um, so this went well. Now I might have a pinhole or two. That's just been my experience on brazing these. And uh, if that happens, you just gotta go back and rebraze it. But uh, the extra flux really, really helps because the problem with flux, just a flux cord rod, if you can see that rod's hollow, is that you'll get up here in braze, but by the time you work your way down, this is already oxidized. So it's really nice to pack the entire thing with flux, and then it's just constant flux, um, keeping the oxides off. Uh, what else? Yeah, so the Sharpie mark that I'd put right here, that disappeared uh, sooner than I would have liked. I have used that before and it's worked, but I don't know if it's with this particular aluminum or how big of a like a heat sink area I had everything just drawing the heat away. But anyways, the flux ended up being a better indication of when it was hot enough. Once it did get hot, um, braze flowed pretty good. So let's get some nitrogen pressure on it and see what it looks like. All right, I got the big blue on it. <laughs> And I'm not seeing any leaks, but I will give it a bit. So just wait and make sure nothing shows up. All right, it's been a few minutes and it's looking really good. I see no leaks. I went ahead and sprayed the surrounding area just to make sure that, uh, you know, me applying heat didn't cause any other kind of weak braze joints to start leaking. But everything looks really good. I'm going to be doing something else on this unit, so I'll go ahead and film that while I'm at it, but that's how you braze aluminum. So when you have a big pan like this, you for sure want three points of attachment on each side, at least. Because what happens is, and it looks like this one has already collapsed at some point from water. It looks like this pan's been full at some point. They will collapse and then dump all that water in the attic. So, now one of the problems with supporting them here though is that it can make it difficult to get these doors off. So, um, this is the way I'm going to do it. Just going to punch a hole for the rivet. All right. And then I'm going to use cable. I've just got a fender washer on the outside and just a normal rivet washer on the inside there. Okay. Now I'm going to make a loop. Hopefully you can see that just a crimp just a normal wire rope uh, crimp go up here and then I'm just crimping it with the same crimper I use for flag terminals hopefully that's showing up all right let's see if I can get a little closer all right yes I would like to have an actual real crimper for these but I can't can't find one locally it just seems like nobody carries them but this is this will support support plenty of weight you do want to use a um, actual wire rope cutter when you're cutting this otherwise the ends fray and it's hard to get them in those crimps and the idea here is that I just got a little bracket up here that I cut down a bit but the idea is that on PMs and stuff, if you need to get this door off, you can just pull up on that pan and just unhook that, get the door off, and then 
just easily put it back on like that, but that'll really, really help keep that pan from collapsing. All right, that's about it. <laughs> this unit, what a can of worms, I'll say. Hopefully that was plenty educational. That was a lot going on but between the diagnostics and repair and everything. <laughs> My goodness.